Welcome everyone. We will be talking about global public procurement theories and practices thereby. So basically central public procurement, whenever we say about the name of public procurement, it is essentially the federal government or probably the provincial government procure, procurement procedures, the best practices thereof. <clears throat> what is in practice and what are the basic theories behind it? So the agenda is very clear. We will be talking about what is public procurement, why is it important, and basically tools for clean public pro procurement. The third, first and the third step is uh, to be presented and discussed in this present uh, presentations, this video. Corruption risk in public procurement is beyond the purview of this particular video. So we will, for the time being, skip it and definitely address it in next videos. Uh, probable videos, right? So what exactly is public pro procurement? What do we understand by public procurement? Did I say about the federal, federal government, about the provincial government, procurement for the consumption of public, the general po population that we are talking about, the citizen of the country, the state, the city, uh, what are they looking into it? So basically we are talking about infrastructural projects and so on and so forth, the acquisition through purchase of real lease of real property, goods and other products, including intellectual properties, works and services. Now, this is what is public procurement is all about it. If it is a land for the railways, if it is something for the electricity, production of electricity, if it is gas exploration, now these are all public properties that needs to be publicly consumed and affects each and every one of us, right? So that is what public procurement is all about it. Public procurement ranges from anything which can be as minuscule as a small office material of textbook for schools, for consumption of the government officials and staffs to large scale construction work. Let's say roads, bridges, airports, everything comes under public procurement. Under UNODC, people might be talking about what exactly is UNODC. It is nothing but United Nations of Office of on drugs and crime, which states essentially that the taxpayer's money should be spent on value for the money. It should add value for the public consumption and the public deal. So essentially what is SDGs? SDGs are sustainable development goals we are talking about. It. There are plentiful of public procurement supports for sustainable development goals, of which I would love to impress upon only three points in today's videos. Public, according to it, the target is pro uh, promo promoting public procurement and practices are sustainable in accordance with the national policies. In according with the national priorities, it should not hamper the national sentiment at any cost per se. So yes, we need to do public promo uh, procurement policies which are in tune with the ethos and the cultures of the population of the nation that we are working together with. The second target would be all about protecting the sun of the soils, the labor rights, the promotion of safe and cultural working environment for the every one of the citizen, every workers, be it the resident citizen, the non-resident citizen, and so on and so forth. And the third part that I say is reducing the number of deaths and illness from hazardous chemicals, air, water, and soil pollution and contamination. That is what we are looking at for SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. So sustainable pro public procurement and how do we go ac across with it? Sustainable development is based on world commissions of environment and development, WCED, we are talking about sustainable public procurement in terms of public procurement, in terms of sustainable development, which should not be impediment to the growth of the environment, the flora, and the fauna of uh, the wild that has been present out here. We should be responsible not only for human being as a species, but rest of the species per se. So the capacity of sustainable public procurement is a major, major challenge in plentiful of countries. Now that is where we require to bring in the expertise so that there is an education, probably awareness of uh, among the human beings, among the citizen and we should bring about a changes in, in the attitude. Let's say the usage of plastic is one of the major concerns. It is polluting the environment at the faster rate but human beings, are, are they aware of it? 
Are they reducing the consumption of plastic, or polyethylene bags, and so on and so forth? Probably this is one of those debatable topics that needs to be understood for sustainable public procurement. Enhancement of skill set should be provided through targeted training with a view to ensuring our procurers are fully aware of the sustainable public procurement process that is available to them as on when on basis. <clears throat> Module agenda. Let us talk about the uh, tools for clean public procurement. Now, what are the various types of corruption in public procurement? People might say it, uh, probably kickbacks or bribes, but believe me or not, there are plentiful of uh, corruption that comes in, that kicks in actually. One is bribery, definitely to garner a bigger role, bigger profitability. People actually take kickbacks and get things done and then probably implement the project in a shabby fashion just to pocket the difference of the money that they are able to go around it. There's a conflict of interest. Definitely, yes, people are often doing the work which they might be benefiting. Only a, a definite few among a few number of persons. And on large, the rest of the masses might not be benefited at all. So there is a, a conflict of interest. There is nepotism. We promote... Uh, a lot of companies we promote a lot of people based on a blood relation based on our know, knowledge or know-how so it's a business of know who rather than know what if people are given priorities as who knows who then probably this is nepotism is coming into it the patronage version is coming into it rather than know what what is required what are the technical qualities if people are not well equipped well qualified how do you go around it Yes, in many countries, extortion is an issue that comes around it. There is a fraud that comes about. People promise something, the politician per se, probably um, uh, no one should be segregated or highlighted as such. But generally, people in the public spheres, public affairs, you know, they promise something and they fail to deliver their pro on their promises. There is a collision of interest per se and embezzlement is somewhere down the court corner people are taken for a ride and that is what are the corruption that goes around it occurrence of bribery by services plentiful of occurrence that comes around it if you look into it the custom clearances comes around wherein we are bringing in some unwarranted growth unwarranted things into the country again prohibited by the law of the land that's the one of those 12 percent then there are preferential treatment people have been treated differently based on their religion based on their taste based on their uh, affluence and so on so a favorable tax treatment yes definitely yes the licenses authorization access to confidential information travel visas and therefore there are so let us understand the impact impact what happens if corruption creeps into procurement first and foremost there are approximately six definitive in, uh, impact that i would love to highlight one is public resource wastages the public money the taxpayer money the value for money is not been accounted for and this is what actually pushes the nation backward then we have poor quality of works definitely people compromise they promise something but they don't deliver the promise good they deliver somewhat a sh shabby product slow down development you know what is slow down development the timeline is not been followed essentially timeline has to be raised in believed in but they don't do it one reason being the flow of cash one reason by the flow of the talent and so on and so forth but anyhow it is at the end of the day the citizen of the respective country suffers then we have the environmental impact probably in terms of sound pollution probably in terms of air pollution probably in terms of water pollution there are n numbers of pollution that comes around it if sustainable development goals are not been taken care of and that is what corruption is all about it the fifth impact is on your own health on your own safety people do become prone to certain uh, medical ailment in due course of time why because either through substandard medications substandard issues or compliance issues per se the sixth and the last one should be a erosion of public confidence in the integrity of public servant and institution that is what been mentioned around it let us talk about you uncac that is all about the conventions against corruption united nation convention of corruption tells you 
everything about bribery, about embezzlement, trading, influence, and illicit enrichment. It tells these are the things that needs to be avoided. These are the things to take necessary steps so that the procurement become much more transparent, much more visible, much more uh, confidence enhancing measure. If it is not done, probably things are going to go on the wrong, uh, wrong way. So public financial management is all about the annual budget cycle, which probably if well planned, well executed and well reported, if not reported, accounted for, will have these four errors. One is the budget formulation, exactly from where the money is coming out, exactly where the money is flowing out. This needs to be allocated in the budget. The execution of the budget should follow the dictum that the budget approved budget has been mandated for and if you are not executing according to the budget probably financial uh, financial harakiri is bound to happen accounting and reporting i have already stated so either it has to be reported or it has to be accounted for exactly every penny where we are shelling it out last but not the least would be a third party audit wherein the audit will highlight what were the waste where the, there was a pilferages of money, where there was a wasteful resources being, uh, being ac accounted for. Now, these are things that will enable you, in fact, should I say, empower you for a better implementation next time around. So public procurement is all about planning stages, which is all about need assessment. Then comes the tendering stages and the post-award stages. In the planning stage, we are planning everything about the project the market research the budget allocation the initial understanding as to who is to benefit and what not the sustainable development goal this needs to be accounted when the tendering stages when we are opening and disseminating the management for the call of the procedures the recept and evaluation of the bids and contract negotiation once tendering stage has been taken care of this is where we need to award or post award stages as to contract the implementation and administration, review the control of quality and timeliness of deliverables, invoices, approval and processing of payment then and there. Corruption risk at the planning stage needs assessment is manipulated, inflated or artificially induced. Identification of the project which serves interest for a particular bidders, for a particular staff members as and when on basis, specification may be tailored to capacity and of probably one company, probably many companies, you need to identify the illegal payment nepotism if there are any services, goods which are not procured in a sustainable development goal manifesto services and goods which are not in line with the ethos and the cultures of the uh, country probably these should not be entertained these are your corruption risks you should look into it remember being transparent will keep you absolutely clean and clear now at the tendering stage what are the corruption one is the distortion of competition favoring Particular bidders, example, unfair advantages throughout, probably briberies, kickbacks to get the tender to understand who is quoting what kind of prices and what kind of condition. Bidders conspire to fix outcomes at times if you're not bribing. Among all the bidders, they might get together at one head and probably they might consult together and then come up with a bid so that everybody wins. Again, this is uh wrong in the first part as far as the tendering stage is concerned let us talk about the corruption at the post award stage first and foremost biggest one is false invoicing or inflated invoicing as the case might be did i say over billing we are talking about underperformance. we are talking about failure to meet standards specified in high risk areas of procurement what are the six main impact number one is an urgent purchases every time there's an urgent purchase purchases they there is a risk that people the public the government might bypass certain procedures certain processes altogether complex technologies technologies which are not easily understood people might take uh, advantage of it your ignorance and come up with exorbitant prices thereby sector vulnerability now this is where uh, people are very sentimentally at attached to 
they are very conscious any any tweak in the sectors impacts their livelihood in a big fashion so that is where the higher risk comes around it what the fourth aspect is large contract when huge amount of money is at stake definitely things become bit fuzzy emergency responses is when we are doing more firefighting things probably there this is again an area where there is a bypass of all procedures all rules all regulation last but not the least would be links to the funding scheme funding schemes at times might be presented in a fashion which might be very looking very lucrative but at the end of the day it is ripping you apart in terms of the interest so requirement for clean public procurement civil society engagement e procurement system standardized mechanism comprehensive and unambiguous legal framework transparency access to procurement related information risk management control mechanism and selection thereby so procurement laws so let us go by procurement law as far as un commission for international trade law is concerned so it should be clearly stated why we are looking it towards procuring certain aspects certain projects certain materials be the small scale stationary things or a big scale bridge or a tunnel that we are looking into it how do we go for the bidding processes best process would be an e bidding where things are bit more transparent inclusive now we are talking not only of money but probably also of time the tender document the qualification provisions for effective monitoring of award awarded contract now once this contract has been awarded things must be in check in balances the regulator needs to keep everything on their tabs all together measures to ensure integrity of the procurement of the staff and the public administration as on when on basis so now there is a concern for red flag assessment what are uh, the item uh, ironies in the contract of bidders every time there is there are things that people would be raising their red flags or raising their hands to ensure that things are, are in place first and foremost is the planning here the example of red flag is series of procurement of similar goods similar product similar services below the threshold for open competitive bidding now this is what needs to be understood you cannot go for similar things time and again tendering exclusion of experienced bidders people who have executed similar projects if we exclude them how do you go around it or probably on technicalities bit submitted or accepted after the submission deadline people often go for nepotism people often go for favoritism failure to answer request for clarification in good time or probably not owning it up giving evasive answers so that the bidders are always confused and they do not come up with a requisite price line evaluation of bits would be criteria where you are criteria are being changed or been tuned as per the requirement political figures are, are on the evaluation board so people sentiments might be awarded post award or contract implementation staff involved in contract award decision is involved in contract supervision unreasonable delay in negotiation executing the contract cost overruns are adequately and probably explained and justified bracket and ceiling provides a simple often a powerful tool for risk management let's say for every uh, $50,000 anything and everything under $50,000 it can be purchased directly you don't need to require an approval or verbal quotation is fair enough written quotation is okay but in excess of 50,000 but less than $250,000 you require written quotation full manuscript has to be there there has to be a minimum of three bits that needs to be taken care of and over 250000 it needs to be an open tendering where it has to be announced and publicly procured altogether so these are the bracket and ceilings that can be coming and i'm giving you a very simple and powerful tool to understand what the risk management is all about it this is just an elaboration for your understanding let's talk about the staff management people should be adequately paid because if you don't pay them handsomely you will not get quality manpower it should be always be a merit based recruitment often regular training is required to keep them highly motivated dedicated code of conduct for procurement staff conflict of interest management post employment regulations gifts and gratuity policies and reporting channels for wrongdoings these are things that comes again and again leveraging behavioral insights now how do we go around it 
reducing barriers for ethical behavior through standardized approaches to information, gathering form checklist, reporting and filing, enhance professionalism by treating procurement as a specific career path with adequate payment and certification as on when on basis. Now, these are behavioral checklists that needs to be come, come across, having an integrated training more often than not, saying what to do and what are the things to be avoided for nudging through default setting moral reminders renewed commitment thank you notes everything counts in the long run so what do we go into it as far as stakeholder engagement is concerned what are the oversight what are the monitoring things that needs to be taken care for first and foremost well resourced and independent audit bodies are required consultation of external expertise external oversight by civil society by media enabled maximum transparency should be given now why are we looking into it because the audit bodies should be independent they should not get influenced by any one of them external technical experts will provide you a bird's eye view as to what is going right and what might be improved upon it external oversight by civil society will tell everything will be impacted from a different angle wherein the civil society will be coming forward to state how it might be beneficial to them or which or things might be harmful to them civil society procurement monitoring should should also be there in terms of the quality of the raw material that has been procured to social witness programs or probably uh, access to the media personalities per se probably helps you to keep things on a tight leash Civil society-led procurement is one of the best methodology because in case civil society provides inferior materials, as a result, inferior end product comes out, it is them to be blamed rather than anything else. But open contracting, now how do we go about for open contracting? Remember, open contracting are a high-ticket contract that has been issued altogether. And this is all about uh, giving informations whenever the open contract is given around it not only a high ticket it tells you about execution performances completion time being quality expected and how does the contractor even ends up uh, in profit as such good practice recommends an open procurement as established in a method of procurement it's one of the best practices that we go around it open contracting announcing it to everyone in the public and then probably tendering through e modes electronic modes if i may say so so increased disclosure increased participation even not only with the bidders but also with the general public thereby that makes contracting more competitive more fair and there are less chances of any nepotism that might creep in Blacklisting or debarment measures in exclude companies and probably individuals involved in wrongdoing from participating in tendering procedures. Now, what is blacklisted? People are avoided. People are not being entertained at all. Why? Because they must have done something shabby or shady in the previous contract. As a result, their credibility has been lost. Now, Blacklisting can be done for life or probably for a certain period of time as in to punish them. So blacklisting register is often consolidated in only one place and can be made available to the public as on when on basis. Blacklisters should be able to based on absolutely clear rules, principle of fairness and accountability, transparencies of goods, judicial practice and uniformity. Best practices would require such list to be binding. Public procurement decision within the respective jurisdiction. Transparency of international to, uh, things that have been mentioned. Let us talk, talk about the integrity packs that comes around it. First and foremost thing, the bidding companies, the procurement staff should sign up agreement, should stand, sign a memorandum of an understanding which will abstain there which will state that they are not into any sort of malpractices integrity packs should be rights and obligations to the effect that neither of the parties will pay offer demand or probably even accept bribe nor will bidders conclude with the competitors at all at any point of time competitors the bidders remain at competitive distances independent watchdog oversees the implementation and ensures the parties uphold their con uh, 
uphold their requirement, their promises. E-procurement is one of the best methodology that I, I believe so. It's an inter internet-based inter-organization information system that automate integrate every part of the procurement processes for the purpose of only reduction of the cost definitely yes do you does it means easy access to information definitely yes and not only easy access but repetitive access to the information in, in fact e-procurement would enable you a certain aspect which might be having an FAQ or frequently asked question in which you can clarify your doubts to standardization of information gathering and reporting now, what is standardization is when a company when a public entity speaks to one of the vendors one of the bidders and a different bidders and a different vendor but every time he, uh, the entity speaks there might be different versions and different interpretation might come up come across with but e procurement procedures which will actually eliminate this thing because there are standard answers which has already been available on the net minimizing personal interactions obviously yes that means there are no personal biases that creeps around there Automating practices prone to corruption, system based, facilitating contract oversight as on when on basis, improve control and audit capabilities, and definitely the qualities of bids are bit, bit much more legible. The uh, qualities of bids, uh, bids are improved by leaps and bounds. Let us go into the e-procurement. In terms of sustainable development goals, 16 principles of greater transparency, greater accountability, more usage of online platform for public procurement has been mandated. 30% increase in terms of number of countries actually publishing government vacancies online. 30% increase, remember from 2018 to 2020, from pre-pandemic level to right now. Trends towards one-stop shop enables via specializations of e-portal where people, where companies, where vendors, where bidders can access information, collect data, request document, engage in transactional services, perform legal obligations and so on and so forth. Prioritizing the clean public procurement measures. What, how do we go it? First and foremost thing is to prevent it. If you can prevent it, everything is taken care of or probably detect. Measuring is prevent, prevention is to put everything in place so that the impact is hard to measure. Detection is measuring is cheap, but to put in place is very difficult. Prevention is proactive as and when on basis, changing attitudes, structures for a long term change, whereas detection is reactive, focused on the person, and after the completion of the project, that you can go around it. Research have repeatedly proved that most effective prevention and detection in perception of being caught is whistleblowing. Whistleblowing is an effective tool for de detection. That is what United Nations Office of the uh, United Nations of Office of Drugs and Crime states altogether. This is what we are looking into it. People should be allowed, encouraged for whistleblowing. Or in fact, there should be an avenues where they can put in their grievances altogether. If things are not going perfectly, not everybody can put a tab onto it, but people in the proximity can always raise a red flag. And this will help the government, this will help public procurement procedure become much more responsible, much more sustainable, and in the process are much more impactful. With this words, I come to the conclusion of this presentation. Thank you for watching this video.